Hey guys, it's Bill from Linda, Tennessee. Well, I didn't really get a whole lot more done on this this weekend. Uh, I made a shortish little video earlier today or yesterday where I uh, kind of showed you how my new linkage, I got this new bearing in there. All these little, all these little divots are because I machined that hole about mm, a thousandth too big. So I went around there and hit it with a center punch to sort of expand that hole a little bit so this thing will get held in there and it uh it doesn't really matter because um on the there's just some movement there's there's just some movement in there i'm not sure if the movement is from the bolt that was going through the middle or uh, around the perif of the bearing or both what i do know is uh, i don't like that i don't want there to be any movement in this i understand that i'm never going to get um, complete, completely solid, um, link on this probably, or, or sorry, completely solid, uh, steering. Like there's always going to be some play course, but I don't want it to be in the middle here. I want this to be solid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to order another one of these bearings and I'm going to space it down, you know, have a quarter of an inch or something. I've got tons of room below this link that I can put stuff. So I'm going to get another bearing and space it down a little ways and, um, just have a block right there just kind of welded to this and then with two of these on there that ought to do a pretty good job of holding that thing from twisting like at all and I may I may just put a stud into the into the top part on the frame I may just put a stud in the top part of the frame and it has and then that's threaded and then I can thread this from the bottom uh, maybe Maybe do that and then put like a lock nut on the bottom or something. I don't know. But um, yeah. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this this part off. I may end up cutting this part off too. I don't know. Uh, someone at work suggested that I just remake this whole thing and he's probably not wrong. <laughs> so, so there was also someone else at work that suggested that maybe I should have two of these instead of one. He was definitely not wrong. So, you know, these guys at work, what are you going to do? So I'm going to cut this off and I got another like a heim joint coming and I'll uh, problem with that heim joint is, is like so let's just pretend this is my actual and it sits about right here on this thing if you look at a side view it's about right there so the heim joint's gonna end up going down lower and again I don't have any problem with clearance but what I don't like is that it's in single shear and I guess that's really not a big deal I mean that's what ball joints have done since the beginning of time so uh, I don't know Anyway, that's what I'm going to try this time, and that may not work either, and, uh, you know, and if it doesn't, then I'll just try something else, and this may not work either, and if this doesn't work, then I'm going to go to tapered roller bearings, and I just happen to have a couple of them from my Ranger, my Ford Ranger. I placed the front wheel bearings on it, and normally wheel bearings are different sizes. The middle one's usually bigger than the outer one, but in the case of a Ranger, they're the same, so, but I happen to have two of them just laying around, and if this double roller bearing thing doesn't work then what I'll do is I will remake this thing and I'll uh, machine it such that I can put double I can put roller bearings in it and by god that won't move I promise you because um, a bazillion cars around the world have tapered roller bearings on their axles and trailers and you name it they all have tapered roller bearings and they all get rid of any kind of play at all uh, in fact you know, why don't I just do that first? It's a good question. <laughs> I don't have a good answer. Maybe I will do that first. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to... Mm, mm, I probably should just do that first. I should probably just remake this whole thing. Forget about cutting that off. Remake this whole thing. And then stop it here. And then maybe I can come up with some sort of double shear connector connection on there. Um... The deal is, is that the double shear, if you imagine this being my my double shear here, and my um, actuator would go sort of between my fingers there, this needs to be able to twist like this a little bit. Now I have in the past, um, on a trailer linkage that I did on a little motorcycle I had, one of my first EV conversions, I had a just a, uh, I used threaded, the threaded part of a bolt that was right here, and then you know, that turns, like the bolt threads turn, or you could do 
Uh, just have a block with a hole through it and have two thrust washers and then a nut on the back here and those two thrust washers or thrust washers in the middle or bearings in the middle or I don't know. But anyway, a shaft going through a block and then that at the end of that shaft would have a, a double shear. So basically another another one sticking out this way. I think you get the idea, but I'm going to overemphasize this just because like that. That may be what I do. Or it may not be what I do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hmm. Well, the new bearing is only like 12 bucks. So I think I'm just going to go with that. I'm just going to get another bearing, make a block, put that bearing in the block, weld it to that, and then we'll see what happens. Other thing I've been doing today is just kind of laying out parts where they might go. Um, I've done this done this before, and I've done this, I'm doing it again. I didn't put the controller on there. I've kind of changed my mind where the controller is going to go, and I'll probably do it again. But uh, now I'm thinking maybe it'd be cool to have the controller mounted up there and have the 12-volt battery mounted right there because it's just sort of a nice fit. Uh, yeah. And then that the controller would be sort of elevated a little bit. I could even have a plate over the top of this and then have the controller mount up here like such. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But that I don't maybe I don't want to do that because if I ever did have to remove that battery, then I'd have to remove all that stuff. Whereas the way it is, if I had to remove the battery, all I'd have to do is po probably just remove the 12 volt battery. I don't know. But that's that. Uh, DC DC converter. I was thinking that might go right there. It could also go back here onto the seat. It could also go right here because there's going to be like a, um, a tunnel. A tunnel that kind of comes up and goes over and comes down. It's going to be a tunnel that goes over there. And then there's also going to be some sort of a, um, a console right here. It's going to come up and over. And then that's what's going to catch the, uh, the hood. So there's also going to be something right here. There's going to be something right there where any of this stuff could go really. Hmm. Maybe that's what I should do next. I should figure out what my body work's going to be like. I should run my hood back. Yeah. I think that's what I should do next. I should just... Figure out what I'm going to do about that. How am I going to do it? Hmm. That's a good idea. Okay. I think that's what I'll do next. Anyway. Um, the other thing that I've been doing, a little bit less exciting, maybe, is uh, I finally got all... My battery's installed in there. Under that towel is a full Nissan Leaf Pack. That's about two-thirds of one. That's another Nissan Leaf Pack. And this is 80 of the 90 cells that were in my Ranger. And those blue ones were out of a different conversion. And today, we had a lot of sun. Actually, this weekend, we had a lot of sun. Gorgeous weekend. Man, what a beautiful time of year. But this was able to get fully charged. And I sat on my little roller cart there and monitored every single one of these cells. Um, I won't say every single one of them. Just every every string of, of five so there's 16 so i just go around my voltmeter and and measure them as the voltage increased as it got to full charge and if any of them got over about 3.6 then i would put a resistor on it and drag them back down to about 3.5 and then just kind of work my way around that and um you know the closer they are to 3.6 the more likely they would get to back to 3.6 some of them just stayed at 3 3 3.4 and I did the same thing with the blue ones. So uh, that's just really tedious. Basically what I was doing is being the job of a BMS. I was being a really inefficient and slow BMS. I've had some comments from people who said, Hey, well, I noticed you don't have a BMS. And my answer was, yeah, you're right. I don't have a BMS. But I think I'm going to uh, bend the knee. I've ordered a BMS. So, and if it if it's good, then I'll probably order uh, at least three more of them they're only like a hundred hundred bucks or so and if they are that good then i may end up using that same bms for the cub because it's going to need one also um in the in the land and my uh, in my jeep i use an orion bms and orion makes a bms junior so 16 series uh, which would work fine for this is a 14 series but uh, they make a little bitty one problem with the Orion is, is there's just a tremendous amount of features in it that I simply will not need in a Cub Cadet. And it costs about 400 bucks. Uh, I just don't need all that stuff. Um, uh, you know, there's all kinds of inputs and outputs and interlocks and just crazy amount of functionality, which is, uh, you know, to a fault, 
I would say, because it's, it's just overwhelming. It's too much stuff. So I've talked myself out of that. I'm going to get something else. Anyway, that's what I was up to this weekend. Um, it's just one of them weekends. Oh, yeah. Also put uh, lug nuts. I put lug nuts on there. And lug nuts are just, I uh, got me a piece of um, all thread and took the lug bolts out and cut some all thread about an inch and a quarter long, 20 of them, and just threaded them in there, welded them from the back side, and put some bolts on there, or nuts on, lug nuts on there. Now, cool, the reason I did this, one, because it looks cool, uh, two, is because at some point I'm probably going to fill these tires with uh, methanol, or liquid, or whatever they put in them, just for some extra weight, and uh, putting tires on using bolts when the tire weighs, you know, 50 or 100 pounds is, is not something you want to do. It's not something I want to do anyway. If you want to do it, you can come out and do it. Never mind, you don't have to because I put lug bolts on it. Okay, time to end the video. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.